Oh, 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 hey there, it's Alex. <laughs> See, Alex, impressions hurt, okay? We can all do it, but it hurts. Ouch. Hey there, night creatures. Welcome back to another episode of Two Weeks, One Shot, a tabletop RPG variety podcast. Harold here, and I am so excited to announce that we have hit over 1,300 downloads. So thank you so much for listening, interacting, and being a part of this little quirky family cult thing we got going on. If you're enjoying the show, please drop us a like, subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever else you found us. Please leave us a review and tell your friends, your family, your enemies, or really anybody around you, like, you know, the stranger on the bus or, you know, the the boss that you're trying to impress at work who seems to really dislike you for some reason. So without further ado, Let's continue our dark and evil adventure into Vampire the Requiem, 2nd edition. Everybody ready? You got your stakes, you got your crosses, you got your thick, sexy, leathery, vampire trench coat thing? Well then, let's get this adventure going. Previously on Two Weeks, One Short. It's London, Brexit, the plague, pollution, and the long, slow demise of the sheltering constitutional monarchy have all taken their toll. It's under these conditions that you receive an invitation to the esteemed abode of the Baron Von Grotex. The woodshed that is my tomb opens and from it emerges Doug Peterson, suburban dad, vampire, and oyster card owner. Hello, my name is Fred, Fred Allen, or you may call me Raven. Wing. Indeed, I, I was turned in the mystical time of 1993. In a dreary basement, in a bopping South London flat, there awakens Marcus Fishman, who is not a fishman, but he is a vampire. You see a man of dark features, of a cool haircut and dark sunglasses, and a really awesome leathery, plasticky, like, trench coat looking thing. Holy shit, it's Neo from The Matrix. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of. It's like the same look, same look pretty much, yeah. Looking real badass and stuff. He's like muscles. He looks much sexier than Neo from The Matrix. Now that I have you all here private, I can tell you that my master, Baron Baron von Grotanks Grotanks, has called you in here, hoping that you will become new members of the Invictus Covenant. So, my vampire kindred, beloved friends, you find yourselves on the other side of a large crevasse that you all have successfully leaped over using your vampire powers. And semi-successfully. Semi-successfully, yes. Your uh, dossier, your entourage, your uh, guy who opened the door for you, uh, let's call him Horny Blade. I thought that was Horny Black Neo. I mean, Horny Black Neo is Horny Blade. Blade and Neo are essentially the same character. No, no, no. no. Yeah, but we're supposed. I, I don't know who Blade is. I'm not sure. Yeah, what's Blade? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not picking up this reference, so I, I have to go with what I know, which is the Matrix. Fair enough. It's stakes, right? Vampire. You kill vampires with stakes. Yeah, like in the Matrix. Exactly. Yeah, ribeyes, rump roast. Um, anything that's sort of like a lean cut type of beef is really going to take him out. You remember that famous scene where the one guy, we find out he's a traitor because he's he's eating the steaks so that they can't use them on the vampires. That's right. What a plot twist. That happened. Whoa. I don't remember his name, but that was the thing that he did. I'm pretty sure his name was Marty McFly, but yeah, that's yeah. Marty, when Marty McFly cheated on Black Neo to eat the steaks. And then Doc Brown stops the bullets um, right? Yep, and uh, and then I found out what's in my wallet. Right. Wow. Right, so Black Neo, not Blade, leads you into a large dining hall of great grandeur and British opulence. You see many, many portraits of the queens and her ilk and her sires and spawns all across the hallway. And you see in the middle of the giant hall a grand table with 
many, many chairs. Let's call them like 27 chairs, like a shit ton of chairs. Um, and it's a dark room, and at the far end you see just a single man sitting there alone. Your guard turns to you, Mr. Black Neo, the your classic, most traditional style of vampire, wearing all leather. Turns to you and says, uh, if you excuse me, says, I'll, I'll go and collect my master. He's provided you with a uh, small appetizer to tide you over before his entrance. This is a different accent than what I was doing. Damn it. Oi, I'm going to pop off for a bit. Go get my master. He'll come back. Enjoy the meal. Sorry to make you wait. Be just a few moments. Completely different. I gotta write these things down. See you later, person who has a different accent but is the same person. If only there was some sort of recording that you could reference. Wait, do Kindred have, like, multiple personality disorder? Is that a thing we can get? Because I, I know we're resistant to a lot of diseases, but maybe not the ones in there. In, in your head. Well, it, it, it really depends on if we're looking at the DSM-5 or, if you know, maybe sections before. That's true. You know what? They change they changed what they call it a little bit and the definitions and all that. Yeah, DID gets really complicated as you get further in. The vampire community must be crippled with mental illness. I mean, I, I imagine. I mean, they're constantly losing humanity points. They're fighting each other. They can't go outside. They're, like, experiencing the SAD syndrome all the time. Marcus Fishman is identified as, as having that, like, need for drama disorder so they get at me too you slut <laughs> what did you call me i'm gonna tell the world that you said that tweet about it so mike indred in this grand hall at the end of this table you see a lone man sitting there he seems to be a average man of average height but he does have an interesting looking mustache and he looks at you all and says oh hi guys my, my name is francisco rodriguez hi, nice to meet you <laughs> no I'm visiting London. I'm here for some auditions. I'm an actor from America. Come on in. Welcome. Well, hey there, Francisco Rodriguez. <laughs> Harold, is is that all this has been? Has this all just been a setup so that we can kill Frank in a game? What? No, you're not going to kill him. You're going to drink from him. You're going to take his life force and then revel in the power that you bring out from his blood. But we can kill him, right? If you want, Alex, you can kill your brother. Okay. All right. Just check it. Just making sure. Is this all just payback that you two cooked up for what he did in our first game? No, no, no. Oh, hey, hey, I, I was out er later on in the East End. I came here to play sexy vampires and be like, you know, stirring up homoerotic tension and everything. And now we have this. I, I went out and bought some some posters of squirrels because I love squirrels so much. This is not what I signed up for. Brian, stop complaining and suck on my brother's neck. <laughs> <laughs> Tenderly. <laughs> well, when you put it that way, I guess I have to. Francisco Rodriguez seems to be having a great time. He's 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 sitting there. He's got a brand new full bottle of water. He looks he looks comfortable. He looks a little happy. You know, he's a good old Frank. Yeah, you know, I, I'm so excited to be in London. You know, even during the pandemic, I mean, they they got me out here for an audition, and I was like, wow. I mean, I've been doing taped auditions this entire time, but if you want to fly me out for to London for an audition, I can't say no. Of course, this is my Frank voice. This one's rather happy. Oh, you guys, come on, come on, come sit down, come sit down. There's plenty of chairs. Um, I don't, I, you know, I, uh, I have like three chairs in my apartment. It's so lovely to be here with, in a room with so many chairs. Is my brother lacking in chairs? He used to be. I think he's, I think he's rectified it. Is this all an elaborate Christmas list that I just need to get him more chairs? This is all just an elaborate setup to shit on Frank for no reason. No, no, no. It's a setup for you to drink from his blood force. I like him. Oh, he's all right. Well, anyway, I was just going to tell you all about my my graduate degree in theater. It's really useful to me. Right then. Off I pop. Uh, I'll drink Frank's blood. <laughs> awesome. Before we get too deep into, into sucking on our friend. And brother. <laughs> <laughs> and brother. Don't forget that part. Vampire doesn't let you forget that part. Vampire the Requiem, second edition. No, no, it doesn't. So before we get too deep, uh, I, I suppose we should probably talk about how the whole sucking blood and blood thing works. Yeah, right. Of course, naturally, this is a big deal. I know there's a certain amount we can have, and we're, in theory, by the time that we're supposed to like be dealing with uh, using it, there's a way to talk about, like, to establish our blood. Yeah, someone, someone, please read the rules about sucking on my brother. So sucking off somebody is something that's really important in Vampire Requiem. Yeah, so if if, if you guys remember, at the beginning of the game, we, you guys rolled for Vitae, right? And that, those are the points you get. We did not. We did not roll that. Do you want to? I'm sure we did. If we were doing this correctly, we would have rolled for Vitae, or I'm sure you guys got some Vitae points. We didn't. Let's just pretend that we, we didn't and talk about that now. And maybe, maybe flash back to 
our business before getting to the thing. We can we can flash back to the opening feeding. Here we'll reinsert that that scene where we did it totally right, and we're doing this game a service and not a disservice and kicking on its grave. 100%. Vitae represents kind of like the magic, the magic force powers that are in Vampire the Requiem, and they give you, you earn them and you spend them in different ways in this game for different powers and skills. Um, and the natural thing to do, the natural thing for vampires to do is to roll for Vitae at the beginning of the game so they know exactly how many points they have at random. Um, and these are points that you can gain, of course, through feeding. So if you're, say, a Vitae hungry vampire who really needs it, then feed, you know, feeding might be something that you really obsessed with or something that you really put a lot of pressure on. Whereas if you're just like a cool vampire who's into like the internet or punching really like a lot, you may not need Vitae as much. Internet vampires are pretty cool. So they, would, they would be cool. I'm on board with that part at least. So the beginning of play, everybody rolls a 1 die 10, naturally. You can count the number, not the success, plus the feeding ground merit. The feeding ground in general is to represent when you are a vampire who like, you have an established like place that you go to feed. Classic. Um, so Mar Marcus's is like a, a little hole in the wall pub not far from the flat where he uh, where he layers. Nice. Um, and yeah, so Marcus has established that as like his little his little slice of heaven. Cool. In in the mean streets of London. Nice. Glad you did that. I also have a merit that I have uh, related to being part of the Carthian movement that tacks onto my feeding ground, so that if anyone else tries to feed there without my permission, they can't. Or they can, but it doesn't go well for them. Very cool. How about you guys? Do anybody else have a feeding ground merit? Nope. Nope. Probably should have put one. Alrighty. You're nomadic vampires. You, you go where the wind takes you. Yeah, you guys are young. You guys are fresh. I drink the blood of douchebags at concerts. Uh, I mean, we all do. Yeah. And the concerts are always in different places. They're always too tall and they stand in front of you at the concert. And, oh. It's like the guys who are like in the mosh pit, but they specifically try to punch people that are standing on the sides, not participating. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Those guys. Yeah. All right. Nah. Yeah. Fuck them. They're douches for being at concerts in 2021 anyway. No kidding. Yeah. Vampires aren't because we can't get COVID. Oh man. My feeding pool is gone. The first mosh pit this year that's going to happen, like the first official mosh pit is going to be horrendous in 2021. Yeah, because we're going to be there snacking on dudes. I know. Nom, 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 nom. There are so many tasty dudes. Okay, so continuing on. All right. So for example, I rolled, I just rolled nine and I rolled a nine on the die. Nice. So I would add one to that for my feeding ground dot. Whoa. So that I have a total of 10. Damn. Uh, which I believe is actually the maximum I can have. Yeah, uh, dude. Since my blood potency is one. So uh, Marcus actually, he as we're in the scene where we see Francisco Rodriguez sitting in the chair in front of us, Marcus is actually gonna sort of hold up his hands and say, well, actually gents, I'm pretty full up for the night. I topped off before coming on over, so. Oh yeah, you had you had dinner before you got here? What, where'd you guys go? I, I've been just been trying out some different restaurants over here on the East End or, or around the castle. I'm not really sure where I am anymore. And this is more of a Midwest accent than what I would think of as Frank, but hey, whatever, you know? Well, uh, Speak, I can't speak for my friends here, but I popped into a little pub near me place, so no worries there. Oh yeah, I've been really meaning to try out some pubs here in, in London since I've been here. Well, maybe you'll get a chance, and uh, Marcus side-eyes his good mates to see if they're uh, how hungry they might be feeling. Doug rolled a two, so I have two points in Vitae, so Dougie's hungry. He's, he's feeling it a little bit. Dougie's hungry for brother blood. Has he has he been having those long nights on Neighborhood Watch, unable to sate his thirst? The neighborhood's so safe, there's just nothing to feed on. I've already gotten all the cyclists. <laughs> 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 now, Mr. Mr. Rodriguez, was it? Do you do you by chance uh, own a bicycle? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I like to bike around sometimes. I'm still sounding like I'm from the Midwest. Yeah, your accent is starting to sound more and more familiar to me, uh, Dougie Peterson. Excuse me. You're Right. Talking to Doug is so difficult. It's it's encompassing and engrossing, I know. Frank Rodriguez. Frank Rodriguez. Oh yeah, this is Frank Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a bicycle, but I need I don't like to wear a helmet. Stop, stop, you're making me drool. 
<laughs> have, 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 a, have you seen my, my work in the in the Samsung commercials? I'm the guy that pops out of the, 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 the cake they're eating, and I'm like, wah! Go on, and as he's saying that, uh, Doug is reaching into his, uh, his fanny pack and putting on a bib, and then he's gonna walk on over to to Francisco. And okay, so oh, hey, I like your bib. My brother used to have a bib just like that. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. Okay, tell me, can someone describe the process of feeding to me, please? Yeah. Um, is it as uncomfortable as it sounds? Do it I just is. walk up to my brother and put my neck, my, my face on his neck? Or do I charm him or flirt? Alex, I hate to say this, but uh, no matter what happens, from given the descriptions in the book, it's going to be really sexy. Uh, it's going to be really sexy. There's a little bit of screaming, but the both of you are going to be very turned on during the entire process. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to get to that in a second. Okay. <laughs> John is horrified, I can tell. <laughs> Questioning everything he's committed to this podcast. <laughs> so, to suckle from your victim, yeah. you must, and call me out here, Helix, you got to succeed on a grapple check. So so that's uh, that's one of your options. Yeah. The, the, what it really boils down to is the two methods for feeding can largely be broken down into either you are doing some violent feeding with a non-consenting victim who is resisting you, or you are engaging in relatively speaking, non-violent feeding with, to speak frankly, a questionably consenting individual who is not resisting you. And I say that because there's a lot of ways, like you, there's more ways than one to get someone to let you feed on them. Yeah, there's a lot of rules on how to activate non-consensual activities in this game. Mm, it's it's really something. Steering away from that language uh, <laughs> as much as we can, though, because boy howdy, vampires. We just keep catching ourselves in these little pockets of trouble. Let's be real for a moment. Like vampires are not nice, and like none of the like it, the game does a very important job of being like, hey, like listen, vampires might seem sexy, but like also they're not. There are some some repercussions. There, yeah, there's some there's some non-sexy things about. Them. Okay, so is, would this be a non-violent feeding? So that depends. If you're just like going up to him and he realizes what's going to happen and he tries to stop you from doing it, you're probably going to have to get violent. Right. Uh, but one of the things vampires can do, uh, I know that we are all capable of, is uh, we can use the beast within our blood yeah, yeah. that might be Satan, but might just be that mental problem that we were talking about earlier. It's way more fun if it's Satan. We're, we're not really sure. It's more fun if it's Satan. But yeah, we can we can use our blood Satan uh, to, to make people do what we want. What? <laughs> John. John, this is the game that we signed up to play. I hope you're... Uh... This is the one that's better than furry pirates. Remember that. This is better than furry pirates. We're all along for the ride on this, honestly. You know... Uh... Ugh. This is White Wolf Publishing's world, and we're just here to be part of it. This might be a good time to interject that White Wolf does have a new version of Vampire, Vampire the Masquerade, RPG, and the video game coming out, and I hear that it's updated with less non-consensual activity. So there. I feel like biting someone's neck and draining them of their blood is always going to be, like, questionable. It's it's always going to be. Okay. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to violently attack him because I don't know how to conversationally maneuver my way into that. So I'm going to roll an unarmed combat roll. That is strength plus brawl minus Frank's defense. Yep. And Frank's defense is one. Ah, oh, rough. Okay. So that is three successes. One of them's a 10, so I'm going to re-roll it. Nice. And that's a five. Okay, so three successes. I'm going to grapple, and I'm going to go for the bite. Go for the bite. Okay. Do it. So what, what happens when I when I bite? How does that? On a successful attack, you cause lethal damage to the person. Okay, so when feeding violently, fangs act as a zero-level weapon. I use the brawl skill. On a successful attack, you cause lethal damage equal to the successes. So I just cause three lethal damage 
to Frank, and then I've taken one Vitae from Frank, which causes an additional point of lethal damage to mortals. Oh, no. Yes. So he's now taken four points of lethal damage. The other thing about feeding violently or otherwise is that the process causes an enticing and invigorating sensation that can distract the victim. How much Vitae do I get from Frank? Uh, I believe you roll for it, right? Oh, the enticing, invigorating sensation actually only happens when feeding non-violently. I am feeding violently. Oh, oh, the pain! I'm in so much grotesque, horrifying pain! The attacker also takes one Vitae, which causes an additional point of lethal damage to mortals. A mortal bitten violently gains discard condition. While still grappling and after a violent bite, the vampire gains access to the feed move. Oh my god. Okay. The vampire may use this move once she's bitten her opponent in grapple. Uh-huh. Invest her opponent in the grapple roll. She steals one Vitae per success. Against mortals, this causes one point of lethal damage per Vitae taken. The number of Vitae taken may not exceed the vampire's blood potency dots. If I'm understanding, I'd have to roll once to grapple and then roll once again as a successful, right? Roll once for brawl and then that initiates grapple and then roll again to beat the check and then I roll again for feed. <laughs> yeah, so you roll once to grab them, then you can roll to damage damage them and in your case you would damage them with your bite okay and then once you have done that as long as you continue to roll and beat them to grapple you can feed <laughs> there's a reason why most vampires prefer non-violent feeding and maybe we should have gone with that instead of just jumping on frank and holding him down and ripping his neck out <laughs> I mean, I guess I did give you the, the opportunity to talk to him, but I guess you guys didn't do that. It's worth noting that because Frank has been subject to a violent feeding, uh-huh. he has gained the scarred condition. Fun. Sorry about that, Frank. That does mean that he is currently taking a minus two die penalty to any rolls to resist fear. Good. Such as with the nightmare discipline or the intimidation skill. Perfect. Uh, and any creature exhibiting a predatory aura attempting to frighten or intimidate that character receives a plus two die bonus. It really is sounding like Thanksgiving at the Rodriguez house. It really does sound like that, yeah. I wouldn't know. You never invited me. I imagine especially because the resolution for this condition is to lash out physically, causing three or more levels of lethal damage to someone. Hell yeah, dog. And then we break the wishbone. Okay, so I have successfully grappled my brother. I'm gonna now roll to feed. Yeah, I mean, assuming that neither of us are gonna try and stop this from happening, which, uh, no. I mean, I'm certainly not. I don't know uh, how much Vitae Fred Allen has. He rolled a 10, so he's almost all the way up. Oh, it's only Doug. Oh, Fred's, Fred's good to go then. Yeah, so we're, we're both good. Uh, yeah, we're, we're fine. This is a treat for Doug then. We're letting Dougie have his day. Fulfill the fantasy of fratricide. <laughs> he had some issues with the pit earlier, and now he gets to make up for it with, with some fabulous feeding. You know, I, I'm compensating, all right? We'll step in if we need to. Okay, so now that I have successfully grappled, uh, I re-roll my strength Plus brawl to to feed. Yes. Okay. Okay. Each turn, the characters. So you guys are now grappling. Technically, you would be in combat, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So at this point, they're, you're making contested strength plus brawl checks in order to see who is in control of the grapple. So that means Frank needs to be rolling these as well. Okay. So. Okay. Let's do it. You're each gonna roll strength plus brawl, from what I'm reading here. All right. Here we go. And whoever gets more successes is in control of the grapple and can do what they want to do with it. This could be a tango with your brother, Alex. So he's got a brawl of nothing. No. Impossible. The strength of two. So that means he's uh, taking a minus one penalty to his dice pool for not being trained in the skill. Uh Uh-oh. So he's only rolling the one die. Here we go. Okay. Which I don't believe counts for the... No, that's if you're reduced to zero. That's not like the like luck die or whatever that gets you dramatic failure. The chance die. That's only if you're reduced to zero. It's the chance die. That's right. So he, he has one normal die to be rolling with. Yeah. So so just, just, for, just for listeners' reference, if your dice pool is reduced to zero, you roll what is now referred to... the one You roll one d10, and that d10 is referred to a chance die. And with the chance die, you only have... Really, you only you're only succeed succeed on a 10 and everything else is failure if i'm not mistaken and then you're also if you roll the one you can do a dramatic failure so you have rolled now it's francisco rodriguez's chance to save his own life take this grapple from him he rolled a five he he failed he's stuck in grapple with you okay i rolled three successes okay doug goes in there and he says 
All right there, fella. Here you go. Going to want to have to watch out with your elbow here and then like puts them in a hold. What? What? Oh, 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 my bones. My, my, my brittle bones. That's all right. They're, they're not going to matter in just a second. Oh, oh, the pains. I'm not good at vampire games. I can, I'm not good at portraying pain and, and victimhood. Anyway, continue. It's a good thing your livelihood doesn't depend on that. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm never playing a victim or somebody who has terrible things happen to him. Oh, you're always an assailant, actually. Yeah. Well. <laughs> it's kind of weird, actually. Can we talk about that for a moment? Like, <laughs> It's a better job, honestly. It's a better job. It's, it's more of a recurring. Okay. I go in for the bite. How much Vitae do I take out of this man that I'm related to? Uh, so how many successes did you get? Three. Then I believe, because our fangs are zero lethal weapons. Yeah, num, num, num. So you dealt three lethal damage to him. Mm-hmm. So I get three. Plus you take one, v- no, so on the first bite, you only get one V-tag. God damn it. Which also deals one lethal damage to him. So effectively, you've dealt four lethal damage and gotten one Vitae. Oh my god. And Frank is, he's hes probably not doing so hot. Okay. Oh, I'm not doing so hot. Because oh. I imagine, assuming he's anything like your average human, he probably has around seven health. So you just took over half of it in, in one shot. Absolutely. I, get, I put him down at five. So so yeah. And now you can keep feeding. If you want. Uh, which re- it requires another grapple roll. This is crazy. I, I got to be honest. This is so much fucking work just to feed on this man and not have to like entice him into it. So you know what? Doug's at three Vitae. Doug's good. Doug is good. Okay. Do you want me to dominate him? We can't just let him go with this. We have to fucking, we have to do something about this, right? Dougie, if you're gonna, if you're gonna stop snacking, like, we're gonna have to step in anyway. All right. All right. Look, I, I. If, no, if you, if you're no, feeling. No, no, no. I, you're, listen, I've been eating. Dougie, I understand. If you're feeling a little bit, you know, you were a little peckish, now you're no, a little no, bit. No, no, no. Look, look, you look. You know, I'm not sure. Dougie has been eating pretty well. I've been doing good on my calories. I've been doing my steps. You know, I'm going to treat myself. Drug, Doug's going to treat himself. So I'm going to I'm gonna keep on a feeding. Good for you, Dougie. Uh, yeah, Frank's, Frank's screams of, of protest have turned from coherence to just sort of blood-filled gargling. <laughs> Delicious. And that sound signals that it's time for another uh, contested strength brawl roll. This is a great time to bring in our sponsors, Squarespace. I'm just kidding. Today we've been sponsored by Sunny D, <laughs> uh, which is real ironic. But, you know. <laughs> Suck it out of the vessel and get energy. <laughs> What a way to describe it. We still have to do one more roll to do the feed. Please, let's end this. <laughs> I just want it feed. Okay, I have rolled. What did you get? It's a failure, isn't it? No, I got I got a success. I got one success. Oh, thank God. One success. He doesn't need to roll. I'm pretty sure he rolled. Yeah, no, he needs to roll his 1d10 again. Okay, here we go. 1d10 for Frank's life. It's a seven, which I guess is technically a failure. Yes. Okay. I feed again. Alex, assuming you're feeding. Yes. Uh, then you are going to drain one more Vitae from him, mm-hmm. which deals another point of lethal damage. Mm-hmm. Is that five? Is that about five? That would bring it up to five. So, Harold, if you had set him to five health. Oh, yeah. Um, that means that at this point he is dying and uh, without any outside aid, yeah. uh, I believe most NPCs are assumed to just sort of fade away. Okay. Ouch. Yeah. So, at this moment yeah you're as you suckle up the last little driblets out of your brother (sighs) the the color starts to fade out of francisco his good healthy shine slips out of his face and everything drags out of his neck and into your doug like mouth for what it's worth he now has the drained condition nice nice uh, just then, the grand doors the other end of the dining hall open up. And you see your security guard, Mr. Mister Neo, leather, leather horny blade man, comes in, escorted by an ancient-looking vampire in gaudy red 
English robes and a scepter in his hand. And he walks in with a bit of a slow jaunt and walks in and goes, Oh, yes, I hope you're enjoying your meal. Hello there. I'm happy to introduce myself. My name is Baron von Grothanks. So wonderful to have you with us here this evening. I was going to say, this got to be the Invictus cunt in it. Yes, yes, my dear sir. Only they dress like that. Yes, my dear Marcus, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Oh, uh, sorry about that. Just like you, my vampire ears are quite, quite keen, even at my ancient, ancient vampire age of 1202. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be real. No no offense was intended there. I did not expect you to be hearing me. I thought I was being pretty quiet with the blokes here. Why, Mr. Fishman, your offense is why we hold you to such value. Oh, well, in that case, cheers, Tom. Yes, we know all about your rebellious rabble-rousing with the other covenants, and we have to say it's your... Your ability to cause rebellion, which is what we need now in the Invictus. We cannot allow these progressive, radical women to destroy our isle. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So you tell, you, you're bringing me a rebellious rabble rouser from the, from the movement of, you know, political revolution. You're bringing me in to stop a political revolution? Absolutely. We need a political revolution to stop this revolution, to revolutionize the British Isle. We must create a revolution to save us and return to the time of anti-revolutionary sentiment. I'm going to be frank with you. If I had to place my intelligence on a scale of, say, one to five, it would be a one. So I'm not really sure what all you're getting at, but good enough. There, there seems to be a lot more circular thinking for vampires than I was at first made aware of. Ah, uh, yes, the American Doug. We are so humbled to be in your presence, Grand Doug. Wait, he's the American Doug. Is there a British Doug? Yes. He's the only Doug I know. British Doug is on BBC. He's doing very well for himself. Oh, how's that work? Oh, yeah. He's the one that's on it, the telly at seven. Yes. Oh, and he only does narration. Right, that's it. That's the bloke. But American Doug, yes, the great forgotten orphan vampire. Your coming was told to us in the stars. I don't think you can see much stars in London. You are the prophesied vampire of strength in the future. Truly, your presence in the Evictus will be the key to our security a thousand years and beyond. I am assuming this is in reference to the neighborhood watch that I've that I've started in, you know, between 5th, 6th, and sometimes 7th Street. Uh, he turns to Horny Blade and says, is that what it's called? Is it a neighborhood watch? Is that what it's called? Who's Blade? It's a neighborhood. It's a crime watch. I, you you know, I take care of degenerates, uh, you know, jaywalkers. Is, is he is he really doing that well? Is it, there, is it good? Is it really that good? Yes, it's your work in the neighborhood watch that we so keenly admire. Well, keeping the streets clean is just kind of a fringe benefit. Uh, it also allows me the opportunity to feed. I'm still I'm still figuring it out. And then, of course, there's there's always um, there's always Freddy. Fred, yeah, Fred. Yeah. Fred. I'm Fred. Freddy. Fred. I, I thought his name was supposed to be Andrew. I'm sorry. I think we've grabbed the wrong vampire. Oh. Is he the wrong vampire? I'm so sorry. These these things happen all the time. Such mix-ups. Uh, we haven't really gotten ourselves into the computer age. Well, that's no problem. That's all right. I'll just go home. Well, hang on. Maybe you know him by a different name. Sometimes he's called... The nonce. The, the nonce? No, 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 no. That's, that's not it. That's not. He clearly was supposed to be a man named Anthony. Who the fuck is Freddy? Wait, it was something else too. What, what, what else did you go by, Fred? It was that other name. Oh, uh, Raven's Wing. Ra Ra Raven's Wing, yes, right. I remember you from the 15th century. Yes, Raven's Wing. Oh. Uh, My God, have you gotten dinner? Well, uh, well, I mean, I don't really change much anymore. That's that's a good point. That's a good, good point. Is he from the 15th century? I thought he was from, Freddy, like... was was you around that long ago? I thought I was the oldest here. Not really, but... I don't, I don't like being confrontational. He seems really disappointed. I figure I just do my best. It's the real reason why Raven's Wing didn't feed earlier. He was like, oh, it's just a lot. It's going to be a lot of, uh, I'm not, I'm not really sure about, you know, such aggressive actions. My therapist said I really need to work on being assertive without being aggressive. <laughs> Fuck, I've forgotten all your histories already. It's only been a few hours. Well, Mr. Ravenswing, I, I, I do apologize. I, I, I seem to have confused you for someone else. I'm pretty sure we were looking for Raven's Paw. 
Yes, I believe that was the vampire we're looking for. Raven's Paw. Raven's Paw. Horny Blade, how could you do this to us? You got us the wrong vampire. Wait, is that his actual name? Did he just call him Horny Blade? Is, is that what you're calling him? Hornicious Blade, Zin. Yes, Hornicious. I call him Horny for short. Oh, all right. I was going to say, that first name didn't make no sense to me. I had no idea what that could possibly be in reference to. He's also my super secret sex buddy that I have super awesome sex with all the time. Well, it, it doesn't seem all that secret anymore now that you told us, but good on you, mate. Yes, yes. Well, it's it's, some, it's a new age, and I'm trying to be open about how I feel about things. And just then, suddenly, suddenly, you hear a grand crash. And floors above you, there's another crash. And another crash. And then... The ceiling explodes with debris as a man plummets onto the ground, onto the shoulders of Horny Blade, and splatter him in a thousand bits and pieces because his shoes are covered in silver, I bet, just to make this moment happen. Oh, jeez. Oh, fuck. Oh. Skip Barrington Jr. has only one purpose, and that's to demolish every vampire other than myself that I see before me. And now, to begin the slaughter. I fire my SMG large, please. Oh, let's go ahead and rip off this band-aid right here. Hey, it's Frank, everybody. Uh, Grotex turns to and goes, no, my sex buddy. <laughs> <laughs> sex is overrated for vampires. Everyone does it nowadays. It's boring. Fire. <laughs> yeah, and you've got to spend a whole one Vitae per scene to do it, too. It's pretty fucked up. Oh, it's terrifying. Oh, man, there are so many rules about sex in this game. Very inefficient, if you ask me. If it's anything like feeding, the effort is not worth it. You all are talking a lot for being people who are being shot by me at present. Dance puppets. Excuse me. Uh, mm, no. Sorry, I'm just enjoying this little extra snack at Francisco we had. Mm, mm, delicious. Oh, lovely. Well, now that I have you here, let's go ahead and do some shout outs. First to Roll Music for providing our awesome intro song titled The River. Also to One Man Symphony for the additional scene music throughout the episode. Find them on Bandcamp and Patreon. And to the contributors at freesound.org for all the sound effects and ambient noises you're hearing throughout the episode. It's really, really good. Thank you so much. Be sure to check the show notes for more info and links to all the music in the episode. For more of us here at Toozcast, check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search Toozcast, that's T-W-O-S, cast, and use hashtag Toozcast to say hello. To hear the show, head over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, and Google Podcasts. If you leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, we will give you a shout out. And if you're listening on Spotify or Podbean, hit the follow button to hear our episodes as they come out. Stick around for the rest of this uh, episode experience drama. And next episode, come on in for the conclusion to our Vampire the Requiem adventure coming July 27th. All right, let's get back to the blood. <laughs> Sorry, I, just, I got <clears throat> more Francisco in my teeth. Oh, it's, it's, it's good the second time still, man, amazing. Yes, he is shooting at you. Right. We're going straight into combat, guys. Well, I'm a, I'm a vampire, so I ain't too worried about it, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, that's right. Bullets. Ah. Bullets. Ah. That's right, guys. Bullets. Wow, this is uh, escalated very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, surprise. I, I, got, I created a surprise for you. This is me. This is all me. This is mine. This is my idea. Beautiful. I'm surprised, and I appreciate it. Hey, for the audience, please welcome Francisco Rodriguez, the real one, into the game. Hi. Hello. Back from the dead. He so lovingly agreed to come in here and be our antagonist, our MacGuffin for the game. Aww. And uh, give you something a little fun to play with here in the vampire world. Is that how MacGuffins work? I don't think so, no. Yeah, I don't think that's the term. So actually, MacGuffin's the opposite of that. Holy shit, you're right. I feel like Grotanx or maybe Horny Blade was supposed to be the MacGuffin. He was the MacGuffin, but I couldn't have two. I didn't eat. You mean the red herring? Yeah, none of you are using this correctly. <laughs> Man, that's not what MacGuffin is. He was, he was the red herring. What? That's what it was. The red herring. Horny Blade was the red herring. Francisco is the deus machina. I think the situation is that we don't have a MacGuffin. So we have an actor and a writer 
<laughs> don't know what a MacGuffin is. Really, that's been the onus of this whole podcast is a lack of MacGuffins. You want a MacGuffin? It's my gun firing bullets at your face. Now dance, dance. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's good enough. So how does how does combat work, Harold? What are we what are we doing here now that this man? What was his name again? Skip Barrington Jr. Powerful, powerful. Skibering? Skid Barrington Jr.? It's Skid or Skibarrington? Combat, man. It's so complicated. As I rifle through the book to figure out how combat works, let's go ahead and give Skid Barrington a quick introduction. My name is Skip, Skip, Skip Amaloo. Oh, Skip. I'm gonna call him Skid, but that's fine. Skid Barrington here. All right, Skid. Your speech impediment is frightening. Skid Barrington, who are you and what are you doing here? Who's asking? the detached voice of the narrator of this game. I am Skip Barrington Jr. For years I have been raised and trained to destroy vampires specifically against those who oppose the Dread Princess. I work for the Covenant Seven. I have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Blood is my name and blood shall be my inheritance. Not mine, but my enemies. Any other questions? Fuck yeah. Wait, is, so the blood is your inheritance, like the inheritance not, is the inheritance not yours, but your enemies? Or is the blood not yours, but your enemies, or both? You are misunderstanding because you have a weak mind. And once I drain it of the blood and carry it with me and cover myself in it, lathering it like love, I too shall garner greater strength. To love lather. I know I just said I only had one dot in intelligence, but kind of rude to say I have a weak mind. I never said I was nice. Are you dancing? He didn't put any points into nice. You know, you know what? I gotta give him credit. He never said he was nice. He never said he was nice. This is a man, you know, lots of things we can say about Skid Barrington, but he is not a hypocrite. <laughs> Fact. So Francisco just entered the game and he's initiated an attack against you three with his modern made large SMG weapon. Is that against all of us or is he targeting one or how does that work? I'm targeting the one that's slow in wit, which at this point could be any of you. You can target all three of us. You could. Yeah. If you want to do like a like a big old just spraying it around the room, shooting all of us. I'll do that, but I'll start with you. <laughs> there is rules for surprise. If we do not realize we're about to be attacked, there is a chance to notice the attack. So we would roll wits plus composure versus skips dex plus stealth. Okay, let's do it. So in this instance, I think we have an okay chance here. Uh, he did, he had to land on a guy, mm -hmm. you know, before he could just start firing. He burst him into giblets. Sure. His boots are going to be covered in gore, for sure. So are we counting successes against successes or general roll? Successes against successes. Okay. Fred Allen is very surprised. Well, that's a lot of sevens. I wish we were playing Exalted, but I guess that'll be next season. X what? X over easy? That sounds fun. Probably not, actually. We'll do it someday. Maybe never. Yeah, I had two sixes that looked like nines, and I was very disappointed. All right, well, I got one success, so hopefully uh, Skip doesn't roll well. Well, let's find out. I get four. So I got a three. I got another three. Oh, no, I got, it was an eight. Okay. Four. And a five. So you got one success. Brian, what did you get? I got one success as well, which I believe on a tie means that I do get to act. Okay, John, what did you get? Nothing. Okay. You got no successes? Zero success. I only had three dice. What are what are your what are your points? Uh all intelligence, baby. <laughs> I was gonna say, actually, that's uh that sounds about right for uh Fred Ravenswing. My wits aren't that great. <laughs> Low wits and probably average composure. Oh no. Grow tank two only got one success. I got two successes. So only Fred is surprised. The rest of us are acting. Oh well, what about what about what about uh Baron von Grotank? Is he Baron von Grotank got one success? Is he distraught at the death of his uh of his sex buddy? Yes, um, and it seems like he's failed the rest, so he will be uh, caught off guard. I believe. So characters who fail the roll cannot take an action in the first turn of combat, and cannot apply defense for that turn. Dude, that sucks. But for the rest of us, we need to roll initiative and see who's doing what. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so you roll one die and you add your initiative modifier. 
uh, which is... Dexterity plus composure. Yes, that's it. Dexterity plus composure. And some, some weapons take minus your initiative as well. A large SMG has a minus three initiative. Uh, Frank, for you to know. So we roll a single die, we add that number to it, minus anything or plus anything for our weapons, which, I mean, the rest of us are not armed at the moment. Uh, so I rolled a four, and then my dexterity plus my composure, that's six, right? So that's four plus six, right? Ten. So you have seven. Okay. Brian, what did you get? I rolled a ten on the die, so I have a total of sixteen. No, fifteen. Whoa. Nice. I rolled two on the die, but I have a five initiative mod, so I am adding five, so seven total. Freddy? Freddy doesn't roll initiative yet. Yeah, he doesn't roll yet. He's surprised. Got it. Okay. And Alex, you and I are tied, so what does that mean? So whoever, I believe that tie is whoever has the most initiative modifier. I have five. You have five, and my initiative modifier is six. So you go first. So I am the superior Rodriguez? Thought so. False. False. This is my podcast. I'm the Superior Rodriguez. I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> Power. Corruption. It's what it's always been. That leaves us with an initiative game. Let's go ahead and play it out. Brian, you have the initiative with a 15. This dude, skip, skid, skibbity doo, just fell out of the ceiling and killed your cool compadre, or nice guy that you have a nice chat with. Mm-hmm. Neo. Why? All right. Well, I am going to attempt something that uh, is drawing in yet another uh, subsystem from the game. That's fine. Uh-oh. Uh, we're, we're enjoying these. We're, we're learning things tonight. How many subsystems can there be? God, there are so many. And uh, this one is going to be lashing out because Marcus Fishman, you know, sees this happening. He sees, uh, you know, horny black Neo get destroyed uh, right before his very eyes. And, and, you know, this guy has this gun. And he looks ready to start shooting. Marcus is, you know, maybe not the best at straightforward physical confrontation. So he's going to start out by trying to soften things up a little bit and lash out with his predatory aura. Ooh. And so he he summons up the beast within himself, as we hinted at being able to do earlier. Naturally. And uh, as he does this, he, like, lunges forward uh, in this very sort of predatory stance and the masks on his face actually uh, are torn apart. They rip and shred as his like maw opens up in that sort of four part mouth thing. And he lets out this hideous snarl that is very, very unlike any normal animal sound and certainly any human sound. Can you do it? That would be made. Can you do it, Brian? Uh, it sounds a lot like this, but lower and louder. Uh... Ew. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're moving on. Everyone at home enjoyed that? This is a sexy game. Uh, Vampire the Requiem really makes me uncomfortable. It's the second edition. Second edition. It's an uncomfortable game, second edition, yeah. Alex, can you isolate that for me? I want it to be my text tone. He needs that for research purposes. Yeah, if that's what you need to tell everybody, <laughs> that's fine, buddy. All right, so uh, when I lash out with my predatory aura, uh, and I have a few things that relate to this, because this is something that Marcus, like I said, Marcus is... Maybe not the best at direct confrontation, but he, he's decent at this. Um, it's how he gets by. So I will lash out, rolling my blood potency plus a power attribute, which is one of my attributes. And in this case, I'm using strength because I am uh, using the monstrous beast. That is what I am attempting to do. So uh, I get to roll and there are some potential modifiers here. I don't think any of these count in the moment. Certainly none of them count for me because we are not in my feeding ground, nor am I hungry or starving. And the victim has not been targeted by any other predatory auras in the scene as of yet. So I get to just roll my blood potency plus my strength. However, there are a couple of special things that I need to double check on exactly what they do and how they work. Check on it, baby. Everything takes so long in Vampire, the Requiem second edition. I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, I should have, I should have like written down exactly what these did first, but. It's not even you, it's just like the system. Is it us? Are we spoiled? Is that what it is? No, it's, it's, no, it is, it is very much like every, everything in this game has its own like little oh series of God. steps. And once you get used to all of them, it flows. I've played in other like World of Darkness games where once you get into the swing of it, you can flow through things pretty quickly, but it's a long time before you get there. We're not there. So 
uh, I have, I believe, two different things that apply here. One of them is that I have the atrocious merit, which is that the monstrous beast is what dominates Marcus's personality. He is not particularly competitive, nor is he very seductive for many reasons, but he is monstrous. And what that does is that it gives me, as the drawback, is that normally, you know how you get 10, there's the 10 again quality you get to roll if you roll a 10 on the die. You roll it again and see if you get a success. I don't get that on seductive or competitive beasts, but when I lash out with the monstrous beast, I get the eight again quality, which means whenever I roll an eight or higher, so whenever I roll any success, I get to roll again. Awesome. And keep rolling until I don't. And then the other thing I get is called Unsettling Gaze, but that only triggers if I actually succeed. So let me roll first. So I get to roll my Blood Potency plus my Strength. And in this case, because it's using the Beast, my Vigor Discipline does not get to apply to this one. Uh, So I'm just rolling a total of four dice and hoping to roll well. Let's roll these boys. And see what we get. All right, that is a 10 and an 8 right now. So that's two successes. And I get to roll those both again. And that's a 9, which is a third success. And I get to roll that once more. And that's a 2. So I got a total of three successes. And now Skid over there, that's his name, right? Skid. Skid needs to roll. He needs to lash out with his own beast. It does not have to be the same aspect. He can lash out in response to my monstrous beast with the seductive or the competitive, for example, or the monstrous uh, as well. Yeah, so it's gonna be uh, his blood potency plus your choice of strength, intelligence, or... Presence? Presence, yeah. Strength, intelligence, or presence. Yeah, so Frank, what is your blood potency? Uh, three. Awesome. Okay, damn. Uh, And what is the highest of your strength, your intelligence, or your presence? Because that's what you'd want to use. Strength. Okay, and what's that? Five. Yeah, do that. Damn, okay. So you are rolling eight dice. Skip Barrington Jr. appreciates eight dice. All right, (laughs) what do you need to know? Uh, I need to know how many of those eight dice rolled eight or higher. Two. Okay, were either of those dice that Roll eight or higher a 10. One. Then roll that one again. Eight. Damn, okay, that is three successes. So we both impose our conditions, but neither of us get a bonus. Here's how that works. Uh, we both get the bestial condition. This hasn't even been a full turn. This has been one person. No, it hasn't. <laughs> I don't even get to do anything this turn. You get to watch. Okay, so basically here's what it is. The bestial condition, if we get into the whole deal with friend with Frenzy, hopefully I, do, I haven't even bothered to check if that's something that should be coming up yet. I'll try and do that while other people are doing their turns. Uh, but we would take a minus two die penalty to all rolls to resist Frenzy and a minus two die penalty to defense due to impulsive action. Uh, and if anyone tries to get us to do impulsive aggressive things, they get exceptional successes more easily. But yeah, basically for right now, what that mainly means is that Skid and Marcus's defense ratings are both two lower than normal, which makes both of them much easier to hit in combat. Thank you, Marcus. So. I just, I just assume that this is just like two vampires saying like, I invoke the bestial form, and then you just kind of hiss at each other for a while. Yes. It's sort of like uh, if you could imagine like when big cats or like animals in nature like yell and intimidate one another at the beginning of a fight, and it's just sort of riling both of us up. But it is hopefully drawing his attention, if nothing else. We should get a lot more of this for the podcast, just so make sure we're covered. Yeah, a little bit of that. If, you, if, you ever, if you've ever heard a cat fight, probably a lot like that. Well, Frank, uh, as you fall from the ceiling, Chip, using his magic shoes that I gave you suddenly, you demolish this other character that I need you to have demolish. Pull out your thing, your SMG of large size. <laughs> Don't pull out his thing. Hold on. We'll get to that later. That's another rule set. That's a different game. No, it's this game. (laughs) It's this game. (laughs) It's very much this game too, but we're not in that scene yet. Then I'm happy I'm not at the beginning of this game. You start to shoot out at this this group of vampires in front of you. The grotesque Nosferatu, Nosferatu, correct? Yeah. 
Gross Feratu. I don't know why you have to say grotesque. That's redundant. I'm a Nosferatu, baby. It's that, that's a package deal. Nosferatu of, of monstrous conditions. You all missed out on Frank's gross Feratu joke, and I feel really bad. That was pretty good, actually. That's right. That was pretty good, actually. Let me go ahead and stop and enjoy that. I heard it, but I chose to ignore it. You couldn't speak through your tears, gross Feratu. <laughs> <laughs> now is your chance to shoot that gun. Oh, shit, he's up. You have entered the beast shield state. You've lost minus two of your defense. And it's fucking on. Let's do it. So shooting in this game is also a combination of scores. To use a ranged combat attack, you have to add your dexterity to your firearms, plus any other bonuses and stuff you might have from your weapon or magic and things like that. So Frank, what you got there? The answer you're looking for on my end is seven. Seven. Good. Seven is good. I believe that's your dexterity plus firearms. Also, I'm wrong. The number is four. Okay. And that's, that's what you rolled? That is my dex plus firearms. Tight. So that is how many dice you will roll. Excellent. Wait, are you shooting me? In the face. He's shooting all of you. Uh-oh, that's, that's not great. One success. So what's the damage rating on a large SMG? There's, yeah, what's the weapon bonus for the SMG? Damage is two. So I'm taking three total damage. Fortunately, because I'm a vampire, it's bashing damage. I feel like I'm safe to assume that I'm within the short range of this this submachine gun because we're all in the same room. Yeah, probably. Yes, you are all in the short range. I imagine this looks like he, he pulls up the SMG and unloads a burst of bullets. Yes, he does. Into Marcus Fishman, who is sort of, you know, pitter-pattered back by it. His, his body shows, like, the force of the impact, but I am not that shaken up by it. Like we're vampires, so we don't bleed. Yeah, why? How how could it, how could it be that you're not shaken up after this good dude just unloaded it on you? He likes it. A lot of the physical. Yeah, for one thing, it's my it's my kink. Uh, but beyond that, uh, as a vampire, a lot of the physical trauma associated with bullets uh, doesn't matter as much. Like I'm I'm not going to start bleeding out from this. Uh, my muscles are fed by the vitae running within my veins. Uh, so I am gonna be okay. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna feel all right. Yeah, you are. Just so we're clear, we took three damage? I took three damage. He shot me, he shot me specifically. Oh, okay, gotcha. Cause I, I got him all riled up, which, you know, that makes sense. So I got shot for my trouble, but that's okay. It's three bashing damage, which like hurts, but that means that uh, until it wraps all the way back around and starts turning into lethal damage on my health track, there's no chance of me actually dying from it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and mark that bashing damage for me, though, on your on your chart there. I, I have done so. Okay, good, 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 good. He, he does break from his snarling to yell out like, ow, fuck it. You fucking shot me in the face, bitch. Yes, you are. I don't know about this guy. He's too smart for us. Freddy. He shot you in the face, yeah. That's that's a face shot. Uh, Alex, it is your turn. You just saw bullets pass through your vampire friend. Uh, little spurts of blood mingle onto the blood of your va- victim's blood that's covering your face. Dougie, beat this bitch. All right, asshole. I can't step into the house of the Lord. Doesn't mean I can't take you to church. <laughs> and I'm going to fucking roll an unarmed combat roll. Nice. Are you going to like lunge yourself at him? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Strength plus brawl and then minus his defense. What's your defense? Uh, skip. Four. Okay. All right. But it's actually two because you're bestial. Yes, you got a minus two. Two because I'm a beast. Beast. All right. That is two successes. So I'm going to run forward and I'm going to actually grapple. <gasps> oh, here comes the grapple. We're doing these again. Doing these again. I had so much fun the first time. I thought, why not? (laughs) You should drink out of this brother, too. (laughs) Every brother I can find. So go for it. So right now, I pretty much, I've grappled. And then on the next turn, we do the contested grapple. Frank goes first. And then we, yeah, we, we contest in that. So now, at this point, I believe John and every other character in this gets to roll initiative and be dropped into the uh, to the rotation. Yeah, boy. Okay. So, John, go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, man. We got a got no, uh, uh, 12. It's a pretty good roll. You got a 12? Wow. Impressive. 
So that'll stick you right behind Mr. Brian on a 12. And let's see how Mr. Grow Tank does, because, you know, he can't miss out on all this. Can't have a game without a Grow Tanks. Initiative is... Oh, he's got a pretty good initiative. Oh, he did really well for himself. Oh, oh. He's going to be right after John. At, nope, nope. He's going to be before John at 14. Nice. Okay. So, cycling through. I love how combat rolls are always the same. You just kind of take turns. Let's go back to Brian. Brian, it is your turn. It is your face that is bleeding now with pieces of bullets in it. Marcus Fishman has, has bits of uh, bits of flesh blown open and, uh, you know, vampire blood congealing in the wound and everything. And he sees that his good friend Dougie P is is trying to grapple this guy. And he, he does yell out, Dougie, hold that asshole for me. And uh, as he runs forward, his hand dips into uh, a pocket of his jacket. And uh, when it comes free, pocket sand, uh, he's he's he has not not pocket sand, but he does have lint, a very, very legal, of course, uh, set of brass knuckles. Nice. That he's going to try and drive right into this asshole's face. Super nice. Those better be registered. (laughs) (laughs) Boy, where's the license? So, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to try and punch him right in in his stupid face. Do it. Uh, So I get to roll strength. Plus Brawl, minus his defense, which accounting for the bestial condition is two, right? Correct. Sweet. And I am going to, because I don't like this man's face, and he said rude things about my face, uh, and shot me there, which is, you know, very uncalled for, honestly. I was trying to make it better. I am going to uh, spend a point of Vitae to activate the active power of my Vigor discipline. Ooh. Uh, and I get to add uh, my dot and vigor as a bonus to my brawl attack. Nice. Which helps me a little bit. So I'm rolling a total of four, six, seven dice. And we're going to try and punch this guy. Boom. All right, that's one. I got one success. Okay. <laughs> on seven dice. Rough, but that's okay. So because I rolled one, I just get that as my success, and I add that to the damage rating for my weapon, which in the case of Brass Knuckles is, I believe, just that they are a zero damage weapon. So zero lethal. So I do deal one lethal damage to him. Ooh, a lethal. There's a lethal out there. Yes, it does. The, the Brass Knuckles do make my punches lethal instead of bludgeoning. Nice. Or bashing is what it's called. A hard, hard hit to chip, chid, clip, drib. Skip. Skip. Thank you. A hard hit to skip sends him into stars as he feels the pressure of Doug's body on top of him. (laughs) I don't know about putting it that way. Their vampire essence mingles together as their flesh press upon each other. This is just a punch, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just told him to hold him still while I punch him, man. It's never just a punch. Do I need to go to Planned Parenthood now? No, no, no. This isn't me. This is the game. This is the vibe of the game. This is getting weird. This is my requirement as DM is to bring in this, this kind of energy. It's not required, but... So there's a there's a there's another character called Frank whose blood is being drained. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's you. It's you. Oh, it's me. He <laughs> put Frank Rodriguez in the game. Yeah, that was you. And I killed him. <laughs> yeah, he said this. I'm Francisco Rodriguez. I'm an actor. I like to buy pictures of squirrels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, got it. I was so confused. I was like, how do I? Mm-hmm.